Oh boy, so this is a story that came up in my news feed the other day, and I just knew I had to talk about it. Um, it's a little over a week old at this point, but I think it's still relevant enough to discuss because it's pretty... It's a very clear indication of how deranged and self-destructive the more insular neo-Nazi radical communities online can be when push comes to shove. The left is known for being in a constant state of infighting, but that kind of inoculates lefties to that infighting. When infighting happens on the right, it causes fractures and schisms that bring down entire cultural movements of online media domination. Look at what happened that destroyed the anti-SJW community back in the day. They were unstoppable up until infighting destroyed them. But here's the story. Vice News. Conspiracy theorists and Elon Musk falsely accuse a student of being a Fed posing as a neo-Nazi. An innocent 22-year-old student become the, became the center of a vast internet conspiracy theory that was so intense he and his family were forced to leave their home. I will show you a picture of this young man here. When you look up this story, there are still several top articles reporting that this guy is an unmasked neo-Nazi, by the way. He is not. This is a, uh, mis mi a, a, a case of mistaken identity. It was halfway through the Dodgers game. He was attending with his mother when Ben Brody realized some of the worst people on the internet believed he was a federal agent pretending to be a neo-Nazi 800 miles away. Earlier in the day, Brody, a 22-year-old recent political science grad from the UC Riverside, had noticed people commenting on his Instagram account and calling him a fed, but he thought it was just trivial and would blow over. But while at the June, yeah, most like anyone who's like a political science major who's like marginally left leaning is used to their Instagram getting blown up with Nazis calling them a fed or something. But while at the, while at the June 25th game, which saw the Houston Astros beat the Dodgers. His phone kept going off until he and his mother realized something horrible was underway. Before they left the game, their home address would be leaked online. By the time they got home, they decided they couldn't stay there that night. In the car, I was freaking out and very nervous, very anxious, like, oh my god, I can't believe this happened. You know, my life is over, said Brody. Everything that I tried to work for and all this just completely gone, and I genuinely felt very anxious and very nervous. I felt like I was going to have a panic attack. I couldn't sleep. I was like walking around and just like pacing because I was so nervous about everything. So as someone who's had their home address doxxed before, back when I lived with my parents in um, uh, Florida, Kiwi Farms doxxed uh, my parents' home address. It wasn't even my house. It, it was I was living with my parents. They doxxed my parents. And um, I, w I took it pretty well because I knew what doxing was. I was pretty ready for it. I knew it was going to happen. Like, you can't be a lefty figure online and not be inundated with constant death threats and the threat of doxing and swatting 24-7. Um, you're Like, the rules of the internet are you're not allowed to be progressive, you know? If you're going to be political, you better be right-leaning. Um, or you're going to be under constant threat of shit like this happening to you. But this is just some random guy who's fallen into a very unfortunate, unrelate. Like, he is just completely unconnected to any of this. And just, like, because of how he looks, he just happened to be an unfortunate doppelganger. One day earlier, over 850 miles away from where Brody lives, two far-right groups got into a scrum at an Oregon City Pride Festival. So there was a Pride Festival and two Nazi groups got into a fight, and of course Oregon, probably Portland. During the hubbub, two neo-Nazis with the Rose City Nationalists had their masks pulled off and their faces exposed. The men's faces were caught on video and internet sleuths quickly went to work. At some point, someone found a photo of Brody that looked similar to the man in the video and posted it as fact. Vice News attempted to find where it originated, but was unable. At about 8 a.m. PST on June 25th, that uh, Brody's name became uh, began to be shared across Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook amongst some MAGA and pro Proud Boy circles. After his name appeared, the online right found a small blurb written about him on Instagram by his Jewish fraternity, which... Here it comes. Which said he wanted to possibly work for the government one day. This was enough to confirm one of the right's favorite conspiracy theories. Neo-Nazis are federal plants that are there to make them look racist. This is, this is like my favorite fucking thing ever. Elon Musk even pushes this. Neo-Nazis are Jewish feds. 
Like, basically, they are, the, the, what the more mask on neo-Nazis, more in the line of, like, Elon Musk say, is that full-on open neo-Nazis, like Proud Boys and Ku Klux Klaners, are Jewish federal agents trying to make them look bad. You can't make this shit up. You genuinely can't. I mean, Elon Musk also partook in this, and we're going to be getting to that in a minute. Despite Brody being a young man who lived in California with public ties to a Jewish fraternity who just graduated college days before the public scuffle of the group of conspiracy theorists and right-wing influencers, almost entirely organized and spread by uh, people who have purchased blue check marks on Twitter, went to work pro uh, portraying him as a federal agent posing as a neo-Nazi. Multiple sources was information about Pacific Northwest Active Club's neo-Nazi groups organized around fitness and combat sports confirmed to Vice News Brody was not the man in the video and has no ties to them. So even the neo-Nazi groups that do their, um, like, fighting sports, like, workout regimens in the mountains to, like, prepare for the Day of the Rope where they murder all the minorities, even they have, like, said, yeah, that, that kid's not our guy. Like, you're just going after some random kid. Many of the people spreading the fake Fed information did so under the idea the neo-Nazi group in Oregon City was Patriot Front, likely because Joe Rogan made some noise calling the group Feds last year. Yeah, so Joe Rogan is also, you know, like, Joe Rogan is one of the most effective, useful idiots for the right in that he pushes conspiracy theories the right believes in, such as, ah, you see this group of neo-Nazis that's doing right-wing terrorism? They're actually Feds paid by the Democrats because the right actually never do anything this bad um every conservative is actually just a good old boy just trying to live their life and watch some joe rogan that's the the idea that these people want you to believe but the group in question was the rose city nationalists a group affiliated with neo-nazi active clubs almost immediately after brody's name and information were shared it didn't take long for the usual suspects to amplify the conspiracy to their millions of followers. Twitter owner Elon Musk replied to multiple instances of false information about Brody being shared on his platform, boosting it to his over 147 million followers. In one case, he responded directly to an article from Zero Hedge, a site well known for its far-right leaning and conspiracy conspiratorial content. Looks like one is a college student, who wants to join the government, and another is maybe an Antifa member, but nonetheless, a probable f false flag situation, Musk wrote under the article that shared Brody's name and photo. While Zero Hedge was deleted, has deleted their tweet and walked back their accusations in the article, Musk has not deleted his tweet, which currently has over millions of views. Obviously, Elon Musk has a huge following and, an amp and, an amplify and it's amplify- amp and it's amplifying stuff. So it definitely made the situation much worse, said Brody. It was terrifying. I'm starting to sort of feel normal now about what happened, but it was just like, it was a lot to take in. I'm sorry, when I read quotes where somebody like, they're direct quotes and somebody kind of stutters in the quote, it's hard to read it, you know? The Zero Hedge article was headlined, Patriot Front member was just unmasked as a suspected Fed. The article was one of, the, uh, one of several by right-wing media and one outlet was even less careful in its accusations and ran a blog with the headline, Who is Ben Brody, the Patriot Front member demasked by MAGA supporters in, a, in the viral video. That is the top article that comes up if you look, look up Ben Brody right now. If you look up Ben Brody, that article, Who is Ben Brody, the Patriot Front member demasked by MAGA supporters in the viral video is the top thing that comes out about him. His life va may very well be ruined because of that. Musk was but one of many who amplified the conspiracy about Brody. He had by far the largest following. Stu Peters, a popular conspiracy theorist who created the anti-vax film Died Suddenly, dedicated an entire segment of his Rumble show to it. Another, a citizen reporter named Alex Shepard, who has over 70,000 followers on Twitter, posted Ben Brody is a fed and a terrible liar, as is outlined in this Medium article. The spread of Ben Brody's name and face was widespread, and much of the posts had a distinctive anti-Semitic ring to it. The Jews are behind everything, one user wrote, posting Brody's face. Some other online figures were using the Fed plant conspiracy theory to do a victory lap to prove they weren't conspiracy theorists. Remember when they called us conspiracy theorists for saying the Feds were planting fake Nazis at rallies? Matthew Wallace, a man best described as a professional Musk reply guy, asked his over million followers in a post about a conspiracy where he shared Brody's social media information. He has still not deleted the tweet. 
At first, Brody thought it was best not to respond to the allegations because he didn't want to amplify anything or make things worse, but eventually he couldn't ignore it anymore. At the urging of his friends, he made an Instagram post on the account of the mob with, on the account that the mob was targeting, trying to clear his name. He then posted debit receipts showing his card was being used in California on the day of the scuffle, and even went as far as to call one of the stores that he went to and ask for video footage of him in the store. He then went, uh, posted the timestamped footage, which matched matches his receipts and posted them. This guy responded to these false allegations like I would. He came with fucking receipts. God damn. Holy shit. This guy's got my level of luck just out of nowhere getting hit with this horrible bullshit out of nowhere, but then, like, just bring the receipts to the table. I, I, I respect the fuck out of this guy. Literal receipts. Still, though, that wasn't enough for people who were invested in this conspiracy. Of course not. Conspiracy theorists don't care about the truth. One Twitter user, an online comedian named Amiri King, with about 150,000 followers on Twitter, was one of the most prolific spreaders of the accusation. King tweeted out, uh, out Brody's video and wrote a lengthy post about why he didn't believe the young man, uh, didn't believe the young man. This includes Brody getting the term Patriot Front wrong. Brody looks uh, looking forward at the camera rather than giving a side profile and how he moves his hands. Retweet if you feel suspicious, it reads in all caps. The tweet remains up. It wasn't just people that knew Brody who were upset about the young man's treatment. In some, in some of the darker corners of the web, neo-Nazis were annoyed with the conspiracy theorists as their belief they're all feds watered down their impact. Musk's Musk Twitter is a massive setback for our discourse. It's a layered psyop making cr crazy people even crazier, wrote one prominent Nazi. None of these really believe- none of these Jews, I assume they said, really believe Ben Brody is the same person. They are writing lies for attention. In the weeks since the incident, the online community that swarmed Brody has moved on to new topics. Musk has uh, been sin has since been posting about his and Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg's penis and conspiracies to spread. While the harassment of Brody has stopped, the posts and accusations remain online. The possibility that a future employer will see these posts is a real worry to the recent university graduate. Obviously, I'm more than willing to explain the situation and stuff like that, but just having that label up itself is very hard for employers, said Brody. That is just, like, a lot to deal with. The uncertainty, the fear. It's true. So, yeah. Mark's what? Oh, yeah. So, Elon Musk has been, like, demanding that Mark Zuckerberg and him have a dick measuring contest, unironically. Oh, so they are literally just calling all the other neo-Nazis Jewish? Well, you have two sides of the Nazis, right? You've got the Nazis who are very open, proud Nazis in the more, like, uh, insular, radical areas of the internet. But then you've got the more modern form of neo-Nazism, where the game is literally advocate for Nazism and say and do everything a Nazi would do, but make it an extremes faux pas to call be called a Nazi, right? So, like, you'll notice, by the way... It's more of a faux pas online to call someone a Nazi than to call someone the N-word. The N-word might as well mean Nazi online, because if you call a popular YouTuber who is very clearly a Nazi a Nazi on YouTube, you'll be inundated with harassment and mass reporting, and you might even get your channel false striked for it. Functionally, it is more of a social faux pas to call, faux pas, faux pas to call somebody racist or a Nazi than it is to call someone the N-word uh, on the internet. Zan would know, I'm sure. Yeah, I, I call people Nazis all the time when they are clearly Nazis, and uh, they I, I end up getting shit for it. I get a lot of shit for it, no matter how much evidence I bring to the table. For some reason, it's almost like you can never actually say what everyone damn well knows is the case, because the game is keeping it subtle. You gotta keep the normies from getting scared away. So anybody who dares to call it how they see it must be pounced on and, sup uh, and suppressed and silenced immediately, or the normies might see that and get scared off from the propaganda. Yeah, it can't scare the hoes, after all. This is a horrific story, though. It really does tie into the Alex Jones story pretty well, though, doesn't it? Uh, the one that we did earlier about how the right and these conspiracy theorists will just push these lies because it's convenient for them. They'll ruin people's lives just to push... A narrative that'll go expired in a week and no one will talk about it in a week, but they'll ruin a person's life just for extra clicks for one week. That is how these people operate. It's all about the here and now. Whatever gets them the most views, the most clicks, and the most positive affirmation right now. They don't care what tomorrow brings.
And they don't care, they certainly don't care what tomorrow brings to another person.